Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor design program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Welcome to the PowerCat Podcast, GoPowerCat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to another edition of the Power Cat Questions podcast brought to you by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Tim Fitzgerald, Zach Carlson, and Cole Carmody today. Our good friend Ryan Gills Gilbert is working a double. He's got to sneak in the shoot around. That will be available on video on YouTube and on the podcast platforms around midnight or so Friday morning. Uh, and this podcast will go live uh, sooner than normal. We will put it up on Thursday afternoon so that you can have it because the Cats had a game Wednesday night, not Tuesday night. I don't like the Wednesday night games. It was this way for years. And now I'm like, no, I like Tuesday. I prefer Tuesday. You get in a little routine. And- yeah. I mean, the podcast goes up Wednesday morning or Thursday morning, I guess it would be. We'd tape it on Wednesday. And they broke my routine, Zach. I'm I'm old. It's like moving the furniture on a blind person. When you get to a certain age, you can't move things around. You don't care, do you? Nobody cares about Tim Fitzgerald, except for my friends at the Fridge Wholesale Liquor. They care about me a lot. In fact, every time I walk in the door, they go, you? And I'm like, yeah, it's me. Oh, and they're so excited to see me. Can we get you something so you can get out of here? I mean, you know, they're just really helpful. Um, they tell me I look great. Like, well, you don't look as crappy as usual, Fitz. You know, that type of compliment. It's nice. Everyone at the fridge is very kind to me. But get into the fridge. Go check out their selection of anything you want in the terms of adult beverages. They've got experts in wine and bourbon and vodka and anything you need. Beer, certainly. If you're an IPA guy or gal, first of all, you're weird. But you can find plenty of help at the fridge. The fridge, wholesale liquor at the corner of this and that in the town in which we live. Get on over there. They also have cigars. Also have cigars. If you're into that kind of deviant behavior. He's young. I did. Yeah, it's a tight schedule. Uh yeah, Ryan Gilbert's working the the double. Uh, Got to get the shoot around in. And what time do you guys leave for the airport to go to Morgantown? We board at four fifty. You board your plane at four fifty. Four fifty is the boarding time. I don't ever remember a boarding time that early. Is that a new airport thing? Like they're going to have five a.m., five fifteen a.m. flights? I guess they did. I guess I never have done that. Well, we're so doing it. you're driving in tonight. We're flying out of here. Oh, oh, that's right. You did end up flying out of here. Yeah. Oh, I I was thinking Southwest into Pittsburgh. No. That's There's right. No direct flights. Mister Moneybags, right here is. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I booked it right in front of you. <laughs> you saw how much this was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it, it. Sports success is a blast, but the travel budget is non-existent right now. And I think we got a lot more travel in front of us as Kansas State now is staring at being the second seed in the Big 12 tournament. If they can win, if the Wildcats can win at Morgantown, they will be the second seed. They have the tiebreakers over Baylor and Texas. Um, Baylor, they've beaten twice. You get into a three-way break, tie break. Yeah, I I paused at the wrong spot there. Uh, you, you get into a three-way tie. The break is uh, round robin. and. The win over Baylor, the wins over Baylor, break that tie amongst the three. And then if it's just Texas for some reason, well, um, you go to head-to-head. And 
that works out even. You go to KU. It might be even if they can beat KU on Saturday. And then you go to the next team down, and that's Baylor. So, Do you go first? Do you go KU first? Or is it go head-to-head first? Or is it opponents lower? You know, I, know, I know it's head-to-head then you, first. Then you go down the rankings. Yeah. But KU would be one. Uh-huh. Do you go to the l- next lowest? Or do you go one? You go one. Okay. And then um, Baylor, if they're not in the tie, would be four. And eventually you get to someone yeah. has a tie break. Okay. And that yeah. Baylor sweep is breaking all the ties right mm-hmm. now. So that's good for K-State. And if they're second in the Big 12 tournament and certainly don't flame out in that first round game or second round, however they mark it, <clears throat> then uh, I can see them being a two seed in the NCAA tournament, which hopefully means they'll be close at hand. Denver or Des Moines for the first round. Um, oh, I've been discounting Des Moines because Iowa State would be there. And now I think Iowa State's probably going to get shipped out as they slide yeah. down the bracket and kick players off. Just wait until K-State makes it to the Sweet 16 in New York and you have to go to Madison Square Garden. I'm sure that oh, trip will be all God. the way. It'll be great. It'll fit the budget perfectly. And- Nothing. Can you imagine what the media rate will be in New York City? We got you a great media rate. It's 500 a night. Also, It'll be the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> One third of the Kansas State's roster is from New York City. So that would actually be really cool if they ended up playing. You know what? From a story standpoint, I can see the NCAA doing that because the New York tie is so important to this roster and program. Um, Manhattan to Manhattan storyline. <clears throat> that can go either way. You can go from New York to Kansas Anyhow. The little and the big apple. Right. I'm pretty sure somebody from Marquise Noel's family had a shirt that was like that. Mm. It was like a... I missed that. It was like a specific... It was like a big apple, little apple thing. Nice. I didn't take a hard look at it, but it was something related to that. But... Okay, so... I, I hope they go to Kansas City. Yeah. I, that, I mean, being in Kansas City uh, would just be enormous. Even Vegas is... Uh, Another media member pointed out, if they get sent to Denver and Vegas, you just hit the road and keep going. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Um, So that will be uh, interesting to watch. Oh, I'm in a bad mood. I'm I'm in a bad mood today, Zach. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think you are too. Uh, Last night, uh, I I loved the post-game celebration. I hope that's a tradition that they extend, even if they lose – that last game to have the players and go to the mic and talk to the students. The I, was, fans. I was told pregame that win or lose, they were going to talk. Yeah. So and the, if you missed it, the players all went into the stands this time for the Wabash cannibal. <clears throat> then they came down to the court and they all had some mic time and that took a while, but that, that was cool. That was really fun. I mean, there's a, there's a real bond between the student body and this team, players and coaches that is, Really fun to watch, um, but then the post game press conferences. Uh, I think Oklahoma was gone. I think Oklahoma was leaving the building to go climb on their charter before K State's press conferences had started. They might have been in Waterbury by the time we got to talk. They to might them. have been in Norman mm-hmm. by the time we talked to players. So we had the first set of players come in. I lost track of what time it was, but it was significantly after everything else. Um, and then we had a long gap between two groups of players talking to the media, two sets of, well, originally it was two, but then they added a third to the first group. Then we waited and got Keontae and Marquise. And then they had to cut them off so Coach Tang could go. And removing the time in between speakers, we still put up, <coughs> excuse me, we still put up 37 minutes of post game audio video. From K State Prescott, thirty-seven minutes for a post game is unbelievable. It's crazy. So all put together, I bet you we waited. We were waiting an hour because I went out to the basketball court. I I was in there for the start of Tang, but I'm like, I could get my walk and talk done for Zach, and I went out there and it was ten twenty-four when we when I left the press conference room after Tang, and the game ended around nine. It was a quick game. What's dragging on longer, the start of this podcast or the post-game press conference? We could do the whole first half before. <laughs> we could sit here in silence for the first half and still beat last night. Mm. 
Here we go. Two questions from Wabash Station. No Ron Gilbert today, so Cole Carmody has to take care of this. He's required by law. The first question comes from comes from Chris six six two zero four. He's already screwed up. I know. I've heard the NCAA tournament is considered a quote unquote guards game. Do you agree? And if so, how far can Kansas State go in the tourney? Well, I don't think there's anything to agree with. I think it's a fact. <clears throat> You, you got to be really good in the guard position in the NCAA tournament. And I think K-State can be. Folks, it's turnovers. It's all, all about turnovers for this team. If they get into the teens, they're, they're in trouble. Um, it just doesn't bode well. If they stay in single digits, they're going to beat you. And honestly put, when Marquise Noel is as good as he was against Oklahoma last night, they're going to win. And he was f- phenomenal as a floor leader. Ten assists, but he did so much other stuff. Uh, it's a guard game, and they're good. Desi Sills plays at that level, almost a triple-double. They're really good. And I think that means they might be successful. Baylor might be successful. You know, Kansas could be. Um, this, I think this conference is set up for a lot of disruption in the NCAA tournament. How many teams in the Elite Eight? <clears throat> Three. From the Big 12. I'll say three. I'm going to say less than nine. Mm. Um, yes. I'll go four. I think half the Elite Eight will be Big 12. Wow. I think it's entirely possible we're going to see, if you want to count Houston into the into the grouping since it's imminent and it's starting next year, that Houston plus at least two Big 12 teams will be in the Final Four. That would be incredible. And that would be playing right into Brett Yormark's hand. As he moves to, you know, demand more money for Big 12 basketball with the next round of negotiations. You're done getting it at a discount because we need football money. That's not happening anymore. You're going to pay for football, and then you're going to pay for basketball. And those will be two separate pools. If there's basketball-only schools, they're not going to get any football money. Why would they? But they'll get basketball money. It'll be intriguing to see how he pulls this off. But he wants to build a product worth so much. You can't deny that you have to have Big 12 basketball if you're covering basketball. What's insane about this team, as we kind of get back to the question, is that when they do the little things right, they are one of the top five teams in the country. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's easier said than done, obviously, doing the little things, but you know, Fitz, we're sitting up there watching the game, and when Cam Carter str- struggles to dribble the ball, it's it's so frustrating because then he can turn around and, and get to the hole and, and get a tough and one layup or, or make a deep three. They do the things that are hard a lot. They do it very well. Sometimes they struggle to do the little things right, and that includes turnovers. But when they can dribble the basketball, when they can make free throws, and when they cannot turn the ball over, their ceiling is incredibly high. And so to answer this question – they can go as far as anybody else in the country because nobody is going to want to play K-State with they ha- when they have Marquise Noel turning the ball over less than five times a game and Keontae Johnson scoring 15-plus points every single time. If those two guys can combine for those two statistics, K-State will not lose when Marquise Noel ha- turns the ball over less than five times and Keontae Johnson scores five or more points. I feel confident in saying that. So if they can— Five or more? Five or less. Tur- five or more turnovers, yes, for, for Marquise. No, you said score. I thought you said Keontae scoring five or more 15, points. Fifteen. Yeah, Fifteen. Fifteen. But I said five. Yeah, you said five. Yeah, I feel confident in saying if Marquise Noel turns the ball over fifteen times, like, K-State I don't think win, I yes. don't think K State wins if Keontae only scores. Is your mic on? You were laughing. Laugh again. Ha ha ha. Thank you. Ha ha ha. So turnovers, yeah. dribbling, yeah. making free throws. K State does those three things right. They won't beat themselves. We'll just put it that way. I just, I still don't know. I think this team could lose in the first round, and I think they could make the Final Four. Like, I still think there's just a huge window. I, I think, I think this team coming down the stretch, I think, you know, this, this kind of backing off of pushing the guys in practice, I think that's, you know, translated to better performances on the court lately. I think this team is more focused. Mm-hmm. They, they recognize what time it is. It's March. It's crunch time. After Saturday, you lose, you're done in each respective competition. I think that they can make the championship game in the Big 12. I think that that's, I don't want to say it's likely, but I think that they have a, a great shot. 
as good of a shot as any team in the last 10 years of winning the tournament. And then NCAA tournament, I don't really know. I know we've gotten questions about, you know, which teams that are 13, 14, 15 seeds do you just not want to match up with? And it's like, I don't know who's in the tournament right, right. now. We don't know those teams. They haven't played their conference championship games. <clears throat> I couldn't tell you. And again, I come back to this. There. Folks, I cover the Big 12. If you want to ask me about Big 12 matchups, I'm good. You want to ask me about maybe some, you know, of the more visible national teams, yeah, but you want me to assess mid majors. I'm not your no. guy. Not right now. Uh, that's not been my focus at all this year. It's not like football where right. we can look at other conferences easily and regularly and say, hey, K State could match right. up with that team. Exactly. There's, And it gets back to the networks pre-programming too much you don't get the best games on platforms always you, they set it at the start of the season so I, I i'm really optimistic about where this team could head and the guard play is certainly a big reason for it next question comes from big sam which teams do the cats not want in their region during the ncaa tournament purdue seems obvious but are there others that present truly bad matchups um, I don't well, think this is necessarily meaning like mid majors, right? Just right. More like, yeah. I forgot I left on. this question in. Yeah, but it is. It's better than you know, which seats can be 13, yeah. 14, 15. I, I don't care. I, I would prefer not to be in Kansas's region. If Kansas is the one, uh, I'll be very angry if they then put K State as a two or three in the same region. If they play in the Big Twelve tournament, they will not do that. I they, feel they confident. Can't. They're just in saying that they can't. Although. Um, 1988 deserves a reckoning, so that might be... Where was that game at? It was in Pontiac, Michigan. How cool would it be if Kansas State was playing Kansas in Kansas City in the Elite Eight, the one versus the two seed with a chance to go to the Final Four? Yeah. It might be the most expensive Elite Eight ticket in history. Right. That would be an incredible, incredible night of basketball. Indeed. Indeed. The, the, the big story, though, is will KU get the number one overall? Because then they can pick their path, which will be Des Moines and Kansas City. Which, mm -hmm. Then Houston, of course, which is, you know, candy. It's a cakewalk. To Houston? Yeah. Um, I'll answer this question and say Kentucky is a team that I really don't want to see. I would agree with that. And I, and I, I think it's a realistic <clears throat> possibility because Andy Katz, uh, I believe he – is he of CBS? He's not of CBS. No, he's, he's with the NCAA. Yeah, he's he's with the NCAA. NCAA. Yeah. He came out with his so bracketology weird. and had K-State projected to play Kentucky in the round of 32. Um, but this was as K-State has a three seed and Kentucky has a six seed. I don't think K-State's going to be a three seed. I don't and think I, and I don't think Kentucky will be a six seed either. <laughs> but – if they're playing them in the round of 32, that's a just a terrible matchup that's, for K State. Yeah, I don't like it. So, the, the athletes, the big yeah. guys. I, yeah. It's just Oscar Sheboy. I mean, let's be honest; they don't have really anybody else. But they still are. They still are Kentucky. They have talent. I would say Duke is another one of those teams that K State doesn't want to play, just because of the pure talent. Um, Duke is probably looking at a five or a six seed. So again, probably wouldn't see them until later on. If you're a two seed. You got to feel really, really good because you can win those first two games. The, the talent, the differential between being a three seed and being a two seed really comes in that round of 32 games. So I, I feel confident if K-State's a two seed that they'll find a way to make it to the next weekend. Um, here's a dark horse for a team that K-State doesn't want to match up or if they do match up, it would be interesting. Um Detroit with Antoine Davis. They're an eight seed in their conference tournament, but there's a lot of people that are picking them to win their conference tournament. Oh, they're eight seed? Yes. They were that bad? They were that bad because Antoine Davis is the only one that they have. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> he has a chance to break Pete Maravich's record tonight, actually, with if he scores 25 points. They play Youngstown State, the number one seed. So if they do find a way to win their conference tournament, uh, that could be a, a, an opponent for K-State. On the 15-2 matchup, which you know how the NCAA is all about storylines. I really do wonder if they would put him. How much How much of that storyline is about <clears throat> recruiting? Because I don't think that anybody cares about yeah. recruiting and transfer portal. I wouldn't either, but just with uh, some of the stuff. How I mean, I think it would be more of a coincidence than anything. What about Miami? Let me ask you that. What if K-State matched up with Miami? That might be something they yeah. would do. Yeah. That, I would think with Detroit, they'd be more likely to pair him up with Michigan State in some way or something mm -hmm. like that. But... Yeah, um, folks, I really believe that the Big 12, um, depending on the matchups and I have to evaluate them, can win every first-round game they play. Uh, I mean, 
I really do. Oklahoma I, State? I, yeah. I, I, I think we don't appreciate how good this conference is. Now, the one that I may not buy in on now is Iowa State because there's some crap going on up there. Um, yeah, it sounds like that program is in deep trouble right now, kicking off Caleb Grill apparently for telling his coaches they suck. That's what we're kind of hearing, that they lost the game the other night. Maybe he just told TJ that he needs to get a bigger size shirt. Yeah, there's a lot of insecurities going on up there. It wasn't about the bridge? It wasn't about I don't think it was about the bridge. I think it was a good assessment. Uh, my sources but I, I actually think that if Caleb Grill had complained about the bridge, he would have been kicked off and then probably charged with a felony if he complained about the bridge. That's you don't do that names. That thing wow. it's like uh, hey, the Taj Mahal isn't that great. What? I mean it's that type of level. Mm-hmm. Next question comes from Kat in Kahlo. I have heard several TV commentators talk of officiating in the NCAA tournament and how it will be different from the Big 12. NCAA games will be called tighter and that this will hurt Big 12 teams. Yet the Big 12 has had lots of recent NCAA success. What do you think of this take on officiating? When did they start calling the NCAA games tighter? I don't think I ever remember. No. They, they loosen it up. They let teams play. They swallow their whistles. They don't want to be the story on that stage. You know, as much as Doug Sermons and John Higgins and, you know, to a lesser degree, Jerry Pollard want to be the show and want to, you know, go to the monitor seven times. Usually the NCAA tournament, they understand they're going to get pissed at me if I delay this game and they have to bump back the start of the next game on CBS or True TV. It's about True TV season. Um, that, yeah, they, uh, who's saying they call games closer in March? They don't do that. They Now, granted, there might be some different types of calls. I think the Big 12 lets rolling picks get away from them a little bit. Uh, they let, you know, I think that'll be something that could catch the Big 12 teams. Uh, but I think this is actually good for K-State if they call a looser game because then you can get down the post and really get physical with those big guys and kind of hack away a little bit. But, um, wow, I don't know. I think with with any tournament or any competition, any sport really, when you go into something like this, the officials are going to be sat down. There's going to be points of emphasis that maybe weren't – readily enforced during the regular season Flop. or you know flopping i think there's going to be some if they things, call that i'm going to be i'm going to be pissed i think I'm there's going to be that. some things where they they sit the refs down and say you know guys you got to do this you got to call this you know you're getting kind of lax on this year i don't know what those calls are going to be but i think that there's certainly going to be points of emphasis that k-state and maybe other big 12 teams could struggle with i but. think i think it'll it'll help k-state to be completely honest because you look at a guy like keontae johnson uh, an official who has not refed a game for K- k-state this year if they see keontae johnson go into the lane and get bumped that's a foul automatically every game that is a foul it is by the book a foul sometimes with keontae because he's so big and he absorbs contact in other ways in different ways than other players they don't call it just because his he's big enough and he's stronger than everybody that he goes against that should not be used against him if he gets fouled he gets fouled i think keontae will be able to get to the free throw line more often in the ncaa tournament especially when these officials have to adjust him early in the game then maybe he has all season long and as much as we like him shooting the three ball and jerome tang's talked about it i would not be opposed to him getting downhill and trying to get to the hoop and 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 get some fouls on some big guys in the ncaa tournament because they're going to call that that's just that's just the bottom line i don't think that it'll be more tight i do think they will swallow their whistles a little bit more um but on the drive when he gets fouled they will call that i feel confident in saying that and i know it's it's everyone's favorite pastime to complain about big 12 officials but the reality is those officials are going to be in the ncaa tournament they may not be with k-state every game but it would not surprise me if there was an at least one official every game casey played in that had already had them once right. this season you know people need to understand that that the officials do rotate through and the top guys work way too much they work coast to coast um but we haven't really thought about this. Being a Big 12 official might give you more mm-hmm. access to getting into the tournament yourself. Right. Because you've been covering the highest level of basketball. But, you know, you'll see Doug Sermons. You'll see these guys. Um, Kip. Chance. Yeah. I'll be John, out there. Doug. 
Um, Keith, Keith Kimball. Jerry. First name basis. A- Antoine, is that Antonio? Or what's his name? Oh, God. Um, Antoine. Is it Pettis? I don't know. Petty. Petty, yeah. Yeah. Not good. No, he's but good. he'll be out there. Yeah. I don't be know. out there. I was watching, uh, uh, for gambling purposes only, the end of a, uh, what was it? It was a Mountain West game. So Boise State, San yeah. Diego State? Uh, yeah. Shout out Boise State, by the way. One of my friends plays for them. Seven footer. Carry on. Tell them I'm pissed. Did they lose? No, they won. No, they won. <laughs> I, I needed a San State. Diego State cover and... They closed the game with San Diego State with a 16-0 run to win by six. Oh, wow. So it got me good. Next question. Next question as we wander off into yeah. the metaverse. Uh, from Last question from Momocat, uh, the first half. Who do you see taking the place of Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson next season? Well, they're going to be young, and they'll probably get back into the portal a little bit. So, I mean, freshman point guard set up, and so you got – that going. You got two freshman I, point guards. As I totally space off names. RJ Jones and Day Day James. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Not enough caffeine. How about Taj Manning? They've talked about him a lot. I don't think he'll be as good as maybe production wise as Keontae was this year. If he is, that would be. He'd, I think he's more of a true but, four. Yeah. But I'm intrigued by his game because he's have, a Baylor guy. They have, like, yeah, they've raved about him. That is a Baylor build. That is a everyday John build. So. Um, I think Taj Manning's going to have a huge step of a guys that maybe fans aren't expecting. Keep an eye out on him. Uh, I, I, I really think David Gasson takes the next step next season too. I mean, he's got to work on his free throw shooting. There's no doubt about that. But if he can add a little bit of range to his game and maybe shoot the three ball, he's going to be really hard to guard. And I think he could have major strides this offseason. Why did I think he was not a senior? Why did I think he was a senior? David. No. Yeah. He was a I thought he was a senior. Yeah. No. I was disappointed no. we didn't get him. <laughs> All those guys Monday. need to beef up. Naquan yeah. Tomlin needs to get into the – that's been his weak point. You know, when you're driving the ball against a mid-major or less, you're overpowering those guys. You get in the Big 12, you get disrupted. And, you know, that didn't really happen last night against Oklahoma, but he's got to get stronger. And if he gets more precise with his outside shot, he had both of them last night. Um, Naquan Tomlin is set up to be a star. He's just got to get the consistency. As Coach Tang said, he's got to run the court. I love how Jerome Tang said, yeah, he was great. But if you saw him sitting next to me, it's when he stopped running the court. I took him out. (laughs) I was like, yeah. I mean, that's why guys are getting better. You want to play? This is what you this is what you need to do. You need to keep care of the ball. You need to run the court. You need to do this. Whatever it is, you almost have an assignment that is your job. Take care of it. And for Keontae Johnson, shoot the three, man. And they're starting to do it. So, but yeah, I think they're going to be fine. They'll bring they'll bring in some more guys. So we have some more transfer portal guys. And um, next year's team will be different. In the fact that they're going to be much younger. Kansas State, for as weird as this has been with 11 new players, has benefited from the fact that four of those transfers were seniors. They're a veteran team, even though they're not veteran together. And it showed up, and it's going to show up in March. I really believe that. I think the ceiling for next year's team is extremely high if you hit on two guys in the portal. Right. I mean, as much as we love Bebe and Tyke Green, they're not going to be going after the Bebe's and the Tyke Greens. No. They're going to be going after the big dogs. They're going to be going after the Mar- the Marquises and the Keontes. I bet they go and try and get a guard, and they go and try and get a wing. Maybe not to replace all the points because they know that there will be some production in these guys. They're going to have to step up. But they're going to go out and get two experienced guys, and I love that. I love that game plan from from the staff. You probably want to make sure you get an experienced guard. Mm-hmm. You're losing a lot in that spot with Desi and um, Marquise and Keontae all going. You're you're just losing some. Who's got the ball in their hands at the end of the game? We're seeing Baylor now with their Keontae as he's gotten experience. How much better they are? That's just kind of be what K State's going to go through mm-hmm. next year. There's a process here. I'm just I'm just not worried about K State in the portal anymore. Mm-hmm. No, because before this season. You'd get guys from UTEP or, you know, East Western Directional State. Arkansas I mean, Pine Bluff. I mean, Marquise Noel is kind of an example of this, and he outshined, you know, the expectations of that type of player that K State would get. But you get guys from Arkansas, you get guys from Florida, you get 
May, they they may not have been dudes at those places. What Cam Carter at uh, I keep, Mississippi State? Mississippi I keep State. coming back to it. He hardly played at Mississippi State. They fired their coach, and he's starting at Kansas State with a new coach, and they're going to be a two seed. Well, that guy how, how's that, that even guy. possible? Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think what's different here is as Cole said is they have proven they're good in the portal. They have proven that they're good at evaluating out of the portal. I mean, it, we're, let's recall what we all thought of some of these guys. Well, they're nice pieces, but Desi Sills and Cam Carter and this Juco guy, Nate Quan, they, they're not going to really help them. Look, they they know what they want and they go find it. But now with this proven track record, particularly with Keontae, the big guns, as Cole said, are going to want to come to K-State. It's a place where they can flourish and be loved and honestly not have problems getting their academics in not you know everything will transfer that's that's a part of this it really is and and the short semesters are the reason why desi sills were here was here he was able to come in for the first semester that short semester before christmas and start class that it that's, that's it. it that's it for the first half we're getting pretty consistent right around 30 minutes cool it's just cool i'm looking at zach and Calling him Cole. Zach, Cole, mm. Zach. Yeah. Zach Cole. Uh, that's just too long. We'll be back. GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat podcast continues after this short break. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash 247 and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, permitted parishes only, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia or call one 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York or visit oasas.ny.gov slash gambling. Standard text messaging rates apply. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Utah, and other states where prohibited. Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. Now, let's return to the GPC Studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Questions Podcast, your first March 2023 edition. I don't know what's happened. This this year has flown by, and yet um, it's been enjoyable every step of the way. This has been a fun, fun year to cover Kansas State sports. We're sponsored by The Fridge Wholesale Liquor. If you think K-State sports is fun, do it with a product with the, from The Fridge. Watch those cats while you consume maybe a selection from our friends at Manhattan Brewing Company. Their products are available down there at the fridge. Get on into the fridge at the corner of this and that in the town in which we live and say hi to Kevin and Mike and the whole gang there um, and ask Mike if he keeps his uh, his elf costume at work, if that's something he can switch into at any moment, that you'll buy more if Mike dresses as the elf. If you're coming to town for a certain event on Saturday, 
Make sure you stop into the fridge before. Okay, so let's just let's just address the the giant drunken leprechaun in the room. <laughs> Oh, that's this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the old Zach. I thought you were. Yes, I it is. I, am I dumb for thinking you were talking about a night with Skylar Thompson? <laughs> oh my God, is that during Fake Patty's oh, Day? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, Skylar. It's Fake Patty's Day. He knew in what he Aggieville. was doing. Yeah, um, maybe he knew what he was doing. And uh, that is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Fake Patty's Day in Aggieville Saturday. It's supposed to be like 58 degrees the last I saw. Beautiful. 60. It's going to be beautiful. And those are the ones that get completely out of hand. Do, do avoid Raton Street. If you know anybody who lives there, just go somewhere else. Um, Is that like a big area for? Yes. Interesting. Well, now, well, last year was that the just the the street party? Yes. Times, I, times have changed. Man, I'll tell you what. I I don't like to uh, get on the bad side of a certain organization here in town, <clears throat> certain government group. But boy, I warned them: if you squeeze Aggieville with Fake Patty's Day and don't go, don't go along with it, you're creating more problems. And boy, they've got more problems. It's no longer an Aggieville event; it's a Manhattan event. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the kids that live behind us will have a, a party. Um, but they're they're great neighbors, so I don't mind that. They they shut it down at ten, which I wouldn't care if they kept going on Fake Patty's. That's that's a holiday. That should be a national holiday. That's how important. It well, it kind of is. Yeah. So uh, if you're not really Irish and you're completely fake about it uh, and you like alcohol, Fake Patty's Day is is an incredible event. It, it should be better than it was, than it is now. But again, a certain organization decided to drive it out of Aggieville. My favorite thing about Fake Patty's Day, not that I partake in this because it's just not my style, but there is something that I will have friends a part of titled Kegs and Eggs at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm. I, two of those things do not mix together, and the third being at six a.m. just is not at my wheelhouse. No, I'm not a I'm not a morning drinker, um, unless it's a screwdriver. Getting out of bed and having beer, not not my game, not my style. I've never actually partaken in Fig Patty's Day, like wake up early and drink and whatever. Okay, so there's always a basketball game that I'm working for you. <laughs> true, that's true. There was a year I think when Casey was on the road, I wasn't covering it. I was the president of Aggieville Business Association, and I made the sacrifice because I'm a giver to do it, open to close. And at the time, I'm in my 40s. Um, the girl we call, former employee, we call our daughter, uh, was my wingman uh, or wing person. And we made it from 9 a.m. to 2. I, I don't know how I did it because I'm, I'm not a distance runner when it comes to that. I'm, I'm a sprinter. But we, Just when it comes to that? Yeah. I, no, I, I like to get my work done and, you know, then call it a night. Let's get on with your questions from Wildfire Station. Thank you. Come to Manhattan, though. If go you really want to have a great day, come to Manhattan. And go to the fridge. And go to the fridge. Um, yeah, drink in your room a little bit, save some money. Go to Aggieville. I don't know what the bracelet situation is. What a joke that became. That was another mm-hmm. downfall of... Uh, anyhow, let's go on. I could talk about the history of Fake Patty's Day. Shout out to Pat Atchity, the inventor, inventor, inventor of Fake Patty's Day, who, by the way, couldn't get his babysitter for this weekend in Kansas City because she was going to Fake Patty's Day. That's life coming full circle on you. It is. Uh, keeping with the K state students theme from exhausted nihilist could any previous k-state head coaches have resolved the fku chant as quickly and decisively as jerome tang no no it was masterful the way he approached it was so incredible no i i think he's the only one who could have done it chris Kleiman could have done it james taylor couldn't do it no one who came across as an authority figure could do it and even though he is an authority figure, he doesn't present himself that way to the student body. You're my people. He's got a lot going on. He it was it it, it was impressive how he shut it down. It's not coming back. No, unless it'll unless, it'll exist during KU games. Unless he no. leaves, which I am convinced he's not leaving. Um, unless he leaves, it'll come back like burning the. Huggins merchandise when he left. <laughs> I mean, the, the, it'd be a, you know, 
screw you, Jerome Tang. We're doing it now. It's not coming back, Zach. It's not. After the KU game? No. Dur- d- you think that during KU games it will not come out? I, I think so. I disagree. It might in it football. Was, I don't think the student body will allow it because they now they now view it as disrespectful to Jerome Tang. Yep. I would agree with that. I'm with you there, but I think during KU games, I think that there'll be some that old, try it. Old, I mean, har- old habits die hard. I think what the great thing about student bodies is the habits are easily trained into the new group. So if yeah. they can keep it that, shut off for a couple of years, that's then, a good point. Then the young people will be the leaders that have never done it and always opposed it. I, 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 I just, think during I, the game it'll happen. It'll happen though. I think maybe football, like Fitz said, but. This is a line we need. Do you, do you think FanDuel would put this line out? Oh, I would hammer. I would hammer the. They will, it won't be back next year. Well, it wouldn't. They wouldn't allow it because we could out. We could influence the outcome. Do they play Sandstorm at, against KU next year? Yes. And do you think? And you, you're on. You, you're on record now of saying that you think. Yes, be, it absolutely. Okay. Take all of my money. Bet the house. It, FKU look, during the KU game during Sandstorm. Oh. Now, look, if it starts and Jerome Tang hears it, he just does this or Dream Dowling, who's the conductor, does this and they'll stop. Dream Dowling is like, he's he's got, he could just, he needs hand motions. Let's do this chant, this chant, and just orchestrate everything. An interesting point to this chant, though. I've heard it at Tech, heard it at TCU. I don't know about Baylor, but for football, I'm on the sideline. For basketball, obviously, we're all in the same arena. But Texas Tech basketball, there was an FK State chant. There was FK State chant at TCU for sure. You hear Iowa State. Iowa State. There is. It's not. At, at one. At once, I thought this was. There was one time where I thought this was a K State problem. It really is a youth in America. But problem. you understand that. That just. That just. Shows you how amazing Jerome Tang is. Right. Yeah. Nobody else could. Mark Adams isn't Jerome Tang. TJ Hamburger is not Jerome Tang. <laughs> um, and who have, whatever else you said. No. Sunny Dykes. Sunny Dykes, whatever. Yes. Upside down, sunny side egg Dykes is not, is not, a, is not Jerome Tang. Sorry. I think it's not coming back. Um, end of story. Yeah. N- Next question from It Day and BB. How much do you miss the spring football game? Are you in favor of a, of a spring game or no spring game? <clears throat> okay. I'm an anti spring game guy. <sighs> Only because Bill Snyder sucked my love out of me for spring football by being so vanilla and boring every spring and flipping the score. I hated everything about K-State spring game, including the fact there would always be someone completely meaningless to the upcoming season. That is a star that everyone wants to talk about in the spring game. I, I, did, I hated the fact that we're going to have a game, but we're not going to show anything. We're going to be really boring. No. Uh, you get 15 practices in the spring. If a coach believes that 15th practice is more valuable as a practice and not as a watered down game, go practice. And that's where I think Chris Kleiman's at. I just don't understand. Uh, I'm going to answer this question by saying I want a non traditional spring game. I want, I know this would never happen. I said this last year when, I, when we had this question. I want a scrimmage between Kansas State and Nebraska. Give me. K State Nebraska spring scrimmage. One year it happens in Manhattan. The next no, year it happens no, in no, no, no. Nebraska's never going to go on the road for their spring game. No. Or they, no, have to, they sell I, that out every year. But I get what you're saying. I just don't. I think because of the the growing concerns with the number of games and contact and injuries and all that, that that's a cool idea. But it will never happen. Not like you know, basketball does the exhibitions now. Yeah. It'll just never happen. No. I just wish I just I just wish it, you would sell so many tickets. Then don't even play Nebraska. Then bring in no, I, South Dakota and have them come down and scrimmage them. Are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to have a multi team mm-hmm. practice? No, you at can't. This point? Okay. You can't. No. But so again, you're asking for an NCAA rule change. Yes. yes. Okay. And there is a new president of the NCAA, by the way. But well, he's the last president of the NCAA. Probably. I'm I'm all in it for a spring event. Let them have practice and then open up something for the the fans to see. You know, maybe it's a seven on seven game, and then you know, 
other things for the linemen to do contests. So back in the day, OU had the spring game absolutely right. Offense versus defense. Defense can score points for sacks and whatever. Do it that way. Make it make it a competition between your offense and defense. Sell tickets. Make it an event like Ron Prince did. Get people in. Do it on K State Open House weekend when people are coming to town. Give people give people things to do. What about this? What about you have a captain, one captain, and another captain, and they decide and they pick teams. It's not coaches. It's players who get to pick the teams. You have to have specific positional requirements. I'm telling you right now. They could get, what, 35,000 people in that arena, or in the arena, in the stadium, if they had Avery Johnson at quarterback on one team and Will Howard at quarterback on another team. And it was evenly dispersed amongst amongst the teams. I'm telling you, they could get a lot of people in there. I, I, I would love it if they took four quarterbacks and then four captains on defense, paired them up, and had them draft players for offense and defense seven on seven and have a four team quick tournament. It's like the NHL all star game. I I'd like seven. That'd I would be, be on board for seven on seven. Yeah. I would too. I'm all for it. But I'm I'm also all for the whole carnival thing. Let's do it. Let's let's get into this. The one thing Ron Prince did Honest to God, it was cool. I mean you brought there were all kinds of families that would just come to the carnival and not come to the K State game. Not go into the stadium. But, folks, I mean, if you're a non-K-Stater uh, who lives in Manhattan, which we have a lot of between, you know, the military and university, getting them to just come to an event involving Kansas State is big. You connect them in some way and then maybe like, hey, that was great. People were wonderful. Let's go to a game. So I'm I'm all for it. I don't know what they're I don't think they're doing Jack. They, no. You know the, the the real problem here with all of society is we don't listen to Fitz enough. Mm. Mm. And I think that's it. I think if we all just stopped and said, what would Fitz want? I think we'd have a better world. I would have but, lost a lot of money if I listened to you on that's, everything. That's true. You would have won a lot of money. Made there. a lot of money on <laughs> Sunday or Saturday. Uh, I've I. I came so close two days in a row after that. It took a, just a really crappy Iowa State losing, San Diego State blowing a lead. It just took that to make me lose. Then last night's uh, parlay, I'm not sure I hit a leg. Hmm. I think I it was a You leg. should have it's, faded yourself full fade. Oh, my God. It was awful. Hmm. Next question comes from Cat in PV. I know university presidents are involved in the decision making for the quote unquote conference, but in today's reality, isn't the quote unquote conference defined as athletics? Outside of the Ivy League, does any employer care about what conference you graduated from? Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you're in. I mean, you know, let's just take my profession, journalism. If you've got a Syracuse degree, how many play-by-play guys are Syracuse play-by-play yeah. play people? Um, Missouri has a really renowned um, journalism school. Uh, you know, Northwestern. There, there, there are places where your degree counts more in your in your working field. Uh, but um, I don't think with undergraduate degrees, it's the great variance that everyone. There, there's some cachet that goes with who's on your degree, but. Okay, I'm going to say it. I worked in journalism with a lot of Missouri grads who were completely ill-prepared for the workplace. They understood some forms of journalism, but they have professors that are their editors. So they never learned to function as the editor, which means not just editing stories. It means coming up with content and directing. And that's a big part of journalism. So, yeah, it does matter. But in terms of what you're asking with the Pac-12, this is a just an academic cultural thing that is going to absolutely destroy a once proud conference. Uh, I, I get that you like to have elite academic programs and be associated with them, but Washington state and Oregon state, aren't that yep. they're land grant institutions. What, what do you look down upon them? Which I'm sure they do. They just don't vocalize it. Cause they're one of them. <clears throat> Yeah, you, know, you did miss the land grant institution on that DD the other week. Who? Cal. Cal, I don't think Cal is technically a land grant institution. I think the Cal 
I don't think that campus is. I think the Cal State system Dave's Berkeley. I think it's no. the system. I mean, the system is, but Berkeley, the campus is Alien Grant. Look, if your entire system is, I don't. Yeah, I look, get what you're. I get look, what you're saying. Okay, there, this is going to cause another rant. If Cal is a land grant institution, what are they doing? They have completely lost their purpose as an academic institution by becoming elite. That's not what our role is in academics. That's not why you were giving the land grant to start with. Shame on you, Cal, if you're raising your admission standards so that people from rural backgrounds can't get in because they haven't had the high quality of education. They haven't gone to a private school. Shame on you. That's disgusting, actually. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I, th- this is amazing what we're watching. Amazing. The ADs have to be losing their minds. You are going to, you know what, and find out. You are talking trash on the only lifeboat that's going to be available to us, and they're not going to let us in. What are you doing? Do you have any idea how your academic institution is going to be damaged if all of a sudden Cal, I'm not going to go with Cal, Utah, is not in a power conference and they go back to the Mountain West level or even somewhere in between because I can see a PacWest merger going on. What a disaster. So would you agree then if you have like a Utah, getting back to the question, does a degree from Utah right now since they're in the Pac-12 no. look any different than if they were in the Mountain West? No. Okay. I agree. No, I don't know where Utah thinks just because they're now an AAU school – which is just such a stupid, stupid affiliation. It's just, it's like it's like a star. Here you go. You're, yeah. You're, you're, it's all that it is. It, it doesn't mean anything it, to most literally people. Literally, to me, it's it's being invited into a country club. Do I get more money because I went to an AAU school? No. Do I get a better opportunity for a job because I went to an AAU school? No. It's all about the person who graduates from that institution now no matter what conference they're in there's people you want to know you want to know the ultimate definition of that Jerome Tang he did not go to college he got his degree from an online school right. guess what that didn't stop Gene Taylor from hiring right. him to be the head coach because he didn't go to a school in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 or whatever it doesn't have anything to do with to it to get back to the premise of this question are university importance are university presidents important in the decision making process of conference affiliation i say absolutely yes it is important because they need to understand the importance of athletics to their institution if you don't understand i don't want anything to do with you if you don't understand that the the only the, the biggest time that you're going to have alumni on your campus is during a college Games. football weekend. It, if you don't understand that, you're an idiot. You are not smart enough to be a university president because athletics are the number one marketing arm and alumni outreach event for any university in the country. And you just want to say, no, we're not going to go make $30 million over in the Big 12 and we're, we'd rather you know, hang out in our little country club for pours at $10 million a year, basically, is what, like, they're so prideful. It's like, and maybe Stanford's like that because their alumni base is just, they're Stanford. They don't go back to games. They don't care about sports. Yeah, you know? it, but like, but the teams like, you know, the Utahs of the world, they care. They care. That's what I, I Oregon, I, I can't Washington, wrap my, around, my mind around Utah that they're, it seems like they're sports fans are more bought into the academic bragging than sports bragging. And I can't. What's going on there? Folks, i got news for you. The Pac-12 as a whole isn't that great academically. I mean, it's got some elite schools. I admit that. That the Big 12 doesn't have. But Oregon State and Washington State are dragging those schools down. Who cares? (laughs) Look, if the worst thing happens, if the worst thing happens to the Pac-12 and... Let's say three of the four corner schools go to the Big 12. The Pac-12 is done. In reality, there's still a conference to be created that would have some value by taking the Pac-12 North, which is apparently going to get left out of everything, and adding schools like Fresno and Boise and maybe San Jose State, bring in Utah since they're going to be left out. That conference, to me, would have almost as much value as the Pac-12 does now. But they won't let in a Boise because academics. 
they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. Live in a world in which you are accepting of different academic missions instead of being so elitist. It is disgusting. Uh, again, I'll say it. I did daily delivery. Kansas State was the perfect school for me to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. While I could have gotten into a Syracuse or Northwestern for journalism, financially I wasn't wanting to do that. But every school has a different academic mission. Now, I get if you want to look down on a school that doesn't seem to have an academic mission, that is just kind of a glorified junior college, which has been the knock on Boise and UNLV. But maybe, how about this? See, this sounds like Sorry. my knees. Sorry. Yeah, we need to oil that maybe. Um, but maybe think of it this way. If we bring Boise in, let's maybe make them a better academic school by our association where they can afford better professors and higher but no, this is a uh, an elitist, ugly attitude that if a school has it, screw off. I'd rather have San Diego State than a school that is going to come into the conference and say, we don't really want to be here, but we'll be here just because it's convenient for now. I don't want that. I want nothing to do with that. I want schools that are like, look, we're not going to get in the Big Ten or SEC in you know, realistically, Utah seems to think they are. Come on, guys. What do you do you seriously think you're going to get in the Big Ten? I'm not sure Washington will get in the Big Ten. Stanford will only get in the Big Ten if Notre Dame wants them. This is crazy. This is the whole thing's crazy. I, I, I'm usually not this way, but I really just want to see some of these schools suffer. You want to be snobs and elitists and, and talk trash about other places? You get your fate you deserve. You kind of want their testicles to get infected. That that would be really harsh, particularly if it's a – never mind. From infected testicle, I have yeah. always heard that a problem with the Pac-12 is that they play late-night games and that the rest of the country doesn't watch. What am I missing here? How can a time zone that hurts the Pac-12 help the Big 12? It's not that they only play late night games. They don't have the first window. Yeah. So it's about the most valuable. Zach, would you agree with that? This now, the most valuable time slot to have now. Maybe it wasn't 10 years ago, but now is that 11 a.m. kick. Absolutely. And then the 2.30 kick. No, those packs. Tw- well, maybe well the, the, the Pacific time zone schools, are they don't like playing at 11 a.m. They hate it. Well, you know, I mean, they don't want to play at nine a.m. Yeah. Right? They don't want to play at nine a.m. Body but, clock. I get that, but also, and they don't they don't need to fill that time slot because everyone else can't. Right? And they don't need to. They can play the earlier time, or they can play the the afternoon time slot, and that's like their eleven a.m. game, right. you know, normally. But you get that late time slot. Let's take K State for instance. K State is not going to play a home game at nine o'clock. It's unrealistic right. that that. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe there's one or two games a year in the in the Big Twelve Conference that are Central Time nine at nine nine p.m. starts, and that's unfortunate. But it, it could happen. But the real value is you get to send those schools out. You get to go play late at night in that almost exclusive time slot on ESPN and play a, a good school like in Arizona or a Utah or whatever. You can put good matchups in that time slot and kind of take that over. But, you know, it's twofold. Pac-12 schools can come play earlier games in the afternoon in those time slots that, that help them because, you know, people don't like the Pac-12 because they play so late. Well, guess what? You get to come over and play in central time zone at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and, it, and you, you get exposure that way. The value in going west isn't, simply having the late game kicks it's having the late game kicks along with everything else Mm -hmm. you now can populate every needed inventory window for a television partner and really the big 12 will be the only conference that can do that the pac-12 can't do the early windows and you can say well the big 10 has usc and utla come on those schools are not going to play every home game they have late night that that's unreasonable to ask a member to do that. They will be able to provide that on occasion, 
but not that often. Also, the Pac-12 product, because of their lack of visibility in those earlier time zones, has really earlier kickoff times, I should say, has really suffered in recruiting and the product has dropped. So again, I say this, there is value in having Arizona State play Oregon State at 9 p.m. Central Time, but that value is multiplied when Oregon State's replaced by Oklahoma State. Now, Oklahoma State is going... And you have teams from different time zones playing each other in the late time zones. There's a multiplier effect. Exactly. We saw it with the ratings of BYU and Baylor. That mm-hmm. isn't even a Pac-12 team. But you go play a Big 12 Midwest team, a central time zone team, and send them out west. You multiply the viewership. Um, so, I mean, really, look – I don't know how many fans from West Virginia or Cincinnati or UCF have been watching late night football. I mean, that's that's ten o'clock kicks for them. You, but you have it within your conference, and, so, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm going to start watching this because this is a conference game. I'm also going to say this: the Big Twelve is better than the Pac-12. People want to watch good football. Right. When good teams go play out west, people are going to watch. Right. There's one good team in the Pac-12 right now, and it's USC. And even then, because that there's only one good team, people don't watch. But when you have multiple good teams go out west to play, people are going to watch. I have news for you, Utah. You have done an incredible job being competitive in a weak conference. But if you had done that in the Big 12 instead of the Pac-12, you would be so much more visible as a football institution. You think you're the big dog simply because west of the Rockies, you're one of the better schools. East the Rockies, we don't care. You swim in a tiny little swimming pool that doesn't impress anyone. But if you would be a member of the Big 12 and have similar success, you would be viewed on a national scale like TCU was this year. That's it. You, the ability to get all four time zones, not a single time zone standing um, more valuable in terms of the whole contract. But if you can populate every inventory window, Brett Yormark gets that. And he also gets there's untapped value in basketball. That's why he's looking at that. And then eventually he will look east to the ACC. Do I want a 20 school football conference? No, that's two. I think 16 is the, the most. But I see where he's going with this. The value in populating all those inventory windows is enormous. And doing it with an evenly competitive product, which has been the history of the Big 12, also makes it very entertaining sports and have great value within the sports betting industry, which he hasn't addressed, but I'm sure is on his mind that I, in fact, guys, I just saw Bud Elliott, this shout out to you at CBS 24-7 for this idea. I just saw a company. I had a pop-up ad on one of my social media platforms for the strangest thing. It's a social media company that educates uh, sports entities on the sports betting industry and how to better bond yourself to it. And again, Bud's idea was if you're on a streaming platform, have those games integrated with sports betting. So you'd have a sideline analyst and you'd have a betting analyst. Oh. Deuce Vaughn is coming up on his, well, so it wouldn't be Deuce Vaughn, but the running back's coming up on his over. Um, you know, the current over for him is uh, the pregame over is this, and now the current one's this. ESPN's kind of been doing that on NBA games. They've XFL, a, too. They've got a partnership with Jack, DraftKings, and they'll go to the studio, and they're like, well, what's your pick Like on next, you know, who's going to make the next basket? Right. What's it going to be? You know, they're, they're making picks like that. I think it's interesting. You can also um, – there's a lot of hockey that you can watch in your sportsbook app. Actually, you can watch Sunday Night Football now. They started doing that on Caesars, I think, and maybe some others. You can actually watch the game in your sportsbook app and and bet it right there and watch the game from your phone. Here's a possibility with a streamer. If you have unlimited streams, you can just put up whatever content you want. You actually offer – you don't send talent to the stadium. You send production, you hire production, and you sync it up with – on two different streaming channels or whatever you call it, the radio broadcast for each school. You sync that up, and then you have a studio crew doing the betting angle. 
So you've got three feeds of the same game. You can listen to your announcers, their announcers, or kind of almost like a Manning broadcast Mm -hmm. with sports gambling, sports betting people in a studio. These are the type of things that kind of push the envelope that Brett Yormark brings to the table. And he's not going to hit home runs every time. He has stirred up a hornet's nest with the media situation at the Big 12 tournament. He has kicked the media out of the bowl. The only way to cover the game now is from the hockey press box. And to get to the hockey press box, you must use an elevator. You're going to have 100 people trying to get up and down an elevator that fans also can access. You won't be able to do your job. And he has stirred up a hornet's nest for that. You will you will either not be able to watch the game or you won't be able to go to the press conferences. You won't be able to do both. And it's a mess. And that's coming from an angle where you don't really get college sports. But he's going to miss on some, but I think the betting thing is wide open. Uh, I mean, and can you imagine having it allowed in Kansas to sync up your betting app to your TV? Here, we're, we're throwing up this one. Here, here we go. This is the only is, issue is just the delays on broadcast. You'll need it to be like completely live, which I don't know if that's capable. The cap the physical capabilities of doing that. Yeah, you probably have moment. to do halftime windows between but, quarter windows for a special in game yeah. bet. But yeah, it's cool. It's I'm, I'm all in. You mentioned Brett Yormark. He is involved in our last question of the podcast. Who plays the biggest role in K State's future? Chris Kleiman, Jerome Tang, Gene Taylor, or the aforementioned Brett Yormar. That was from Joe Katz, by the Thank way. Thank you, Joe Katz. That's a great question. Can I just – I'm going to answer this and say Chris Kleiman. Football drives everything. Yeah. I mean, as as awesome as as this past year for K-State sports has been, like you mentioned, and Drum Tang has played a major part in that, there is no denying that football is the main driver of everything. If football goes into the tank, everything looks different. Everything looks different. With all the money they've invested in this program, football has to be successful. They won a Big 12 championship with a roster that I think now we look back and say they overachieved. They're going to be really good next year, and this program is on the up and up. It is so much harder to successfully build a football program than it is to build a basketball program. We have seen that time in and time out. I think the answer to this question is Chris Kleiman and – I don't even know if it's that close because K-State is locked in the Big 12. They're not going anywhere. No. So is it Gene Taylor then? Maybe it would be number two. But as long as Chris Kleiman is around and having success, everything else will follow. I'll say Brett Yormark because I think that what he's doing in elevating the conference Mm -hmm. and securing the conference's future, K-State can be bad. That's fine. But as long as you're in a good conference, then you can be back. You know, K-State's going to have some down years eventually. I mean, that's that's a given. As much as we we would love for K-State to be a dynasty and win, you know, Big 12 championships in every sport every year, you know, that's not necessarily realistic. But if you can be in the most secure position within your conference, you know, and I think that Brett Yormark is doing his best at, at positioning the Big 12 to be potentially the premier conference across the country. Uh, I don't think you can separate the three K-State entities because there's a multiplying effect with all three of them. Gene Taylor hiring the coaches and these two coaches being so similar and yet different in the same age bracket, um, same energy levels, but different approaches. And they because of that, they fit different needs of the, the community. But I'm going to, so with that said, I'm going to agree with Zach because Brett Yormark presents Kansas State with an opportunity to reach a level that without him, I'm sure, would happen. Uh, If Brett Yormark can pull off getting the Big 12 in the next 10 years, folks, this isn't a short play. I don't think Brett Yormark's coming to this job unless he gets offered something just huge to be here a year or two. I know I've seen that, but he is long-term planning for the next contract. What he signed in the media rights contract this time was all about surviving to the next one and making the most of this five- to seven-year window and maximizing how good the Big 12, the new 12, can be. And if all of a sudden you see Brett Yarmark making moves in the media 
that elevates the revenue from basketball and really brings football online with, you know, trying to be competitive at the highest levels, which it isn't right now. It just isn't. Oklahoma kept getting into the playoff and getting their ass kicked. At least TCU won a game. So um, if that can happen consistently, getting to a championship game or being competitive, yeah, Brett Yormark can bring something that K-State alone can't bring, even with the great coaches. Somehow this one was this half was even longer. And and I think I've I've isolated the problem. Realignment. Me. That's me. It's me. I'm a problem. I talk too much. I'm gonna sit here and talk about the ending of the show way too long, and Zach's just gonna have to cut me off. Zach. It's realignment. It it stopped. Thank you for listening to the Power Cat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. You ready to ride? I thought you'd never ask. It's the untold story of the greatest American lawman. I'm warning you. Your wicked days are done. Lawmen, Bass Reeves, new original series, now streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. The drama. They're having to be separated. They've both been shown the red card. The entertainment. And the superstar. Oh, no, no, yes. What a goal. Welcome to the Planet Premier League podcast. I'm Mark Chapman, and every week, Cesc Fabregas, Nader Manua, and myself talk all things Premier League. They have this dynamism and this quality that they can play anywhere. They need to prove themselves in scoring more and more and more goals. I think if they don't win the title this year, the season is a failure in the league. Planet Premier League. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.